evening and welcome to Bronx Talk. At the end of August, New York City lost the iconic sound of WCBS News Radio 88, part of New York's fabric for nearly six decades. WCBS informed New Yorkers 24 7 with news, sports, traffic, and weather. Odyssey, the company that owns WCBS, has licensed its 880 AM signal to ESPN for sports talk. It's now W. HSQ AM. Tonight's guests, both of whom have distinguished careers in news media, join us to review not only the effect of losing WCBS, but to also help us understand what Odyssey characterized as the headwinds facing local journalism, especially in localities like our home borough of the Bronx. So please join me in welcoming the editor-in-chief of the state's most important political publication, City and State New York. It is Ralph Ortega. Thanks you for joining us, Ralph. And a news editor at Patch Long Island who's been an evening anchor at Bloomberg, a sports and traffic anchor at WINS, has held other positions in New York news media. It's Jerry Barmash. Nice to have you with us, Jerry. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Uh, gentlemen, thanks <laughs> for joining us. It's a challenging time for us here in, in, um, in broadcasting and people who uh, do news and information. I, I was inspired to do this program not only because WCBS left, but because I read the little editorial, the little piece that um, uh, Ralph writes at the front of uh, uh, City and State New York each week. He wrote, local news is more in more jeopardy now than ever. WCBS 880, all news radio is ending. Layoffs could be coming also to WNYC and the New York Times. They gave up local political endorsements. In addition, uh, he added these decisions, whether business related or editorial driven, continue the abandonment of local journalism. It's a crisis that's only getting worse. Those are the, your words. Uh, what did you think when you heard that WCBS was, was leaving us, was going away? Well, I, I, uh, well, I, I was first uh, over, you know, overwhelmed with sadness, honestly, really? because uh, it, it brought back uh, a lot of memories of growing up in New York City. Um, brought back memories of my, uh, my, my father, my, my family, uh, where we lived in a household where you could have 10-10 winds playing on one radio. Uh, on one side of the house and, uh, uh, and WCBS, WCBS on, on another. Other. Yeah, wow. absolutely, absolutely. That's that's how that's how you really got corrupted. To that this was going to be your life. I'm I'm guessing. <laughs> well, I we also were a, a, a big print family, so uh, we had the New York Times delivered every morning. Uh, my father uh, worked at a bank nearby, uh, selling life insurance, and he would uh, come home at lunch and uh, with the Daily News under his arm. And then uh, he'd come home in, in the evening with the New York Post because it was uh, an, even, an afternoon paper. Right, and then right, we would right, sit down right. and watch Walter Cronkite. Uh, so you really had a lot of news. Yeah. I, I, I recall, frankly, starting with that, that um, my mom, especially toward the end of her life, she would fall asleep with her, she still had her little transistor radio with 880 uh, and just be listening yeah. constantly to news. Well, what's the effect? What, 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 are, what were your concerns that you expressed in that editorial piece, and what are your concerns now going into the future? Well, I, I, I think what we're losing is a diversity of news, and also, uh, you know, it, it, I, New York City is a town of multiples. We have, uh, you know, several new daily newspapers. Um, it shouldn't be uh, any surprise that we had uh, not one but two all news. Uh, radio stations, and um, I was concerned when uh, they uh, both became sister stations under Odyssey. I was going to ask you um, about that. I'm certainly going to ask Jerry about yeah, that. Yeah, because that's always a telling sign of, of uh, a red flag that it, you know one of them may not survive because the licenses for the radio stations have more value uh, than the actual operation these days because. Uh, you know, large corporate owners are uh, trying to trim costs and and not uh, you know raise you know they they've got margins to meet of course and, and investors to make happy. So um, I, I, I if we lose we're, what we're losing there is a, you know, a, another news operation that could give another perspective on what's happening in New York. And City. CBS was generally credited with more depth, is what is the way I understood it and the way I heard it. It, it was the slower 
The you know, so, 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 you know. So, so my mom could really sit and listen to the stories on the. On 10 the 10 had the, did, 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 you know, the, the, the ticker they playing do, in the yeah. background, which they still do, right? And a lot yeah. of it gets lost, I'm, right. so, I'm assuming, these days on people. Um, Jer Jerry, I was at the, um, the, I went to visit a friend at WINS. And when I went in, and I had no idea, and that's there um, at the Hudson Square studios, right. I was shocked that, like, you know, WCBS and WINS were in the same place. You know, it, it, it's like the same person owning, uh, you know, um, Home Depot and, and uh, all the other uh, uh, stores. There's something wrong with that, right? Yeah. And, I mean, and one last thing before sure. I throw it to you. You would think that anybody who owned both of them at some point was going to say, why do I need these two, right? It costs me more, uh, you know, maybe I'm selling to the same advertisers. I mean, I never really studied it. So anyway, that's my thought. Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly comes off as a monopoly when you think about it, uh, that in New York, you've got two all news stations. And that was for a number of years. It was Westinghouse was the owner of uh, Wins, uh, and it was CBS, actual CBS owning CBS, uh, WCBS. And, uh, and then it was, before Odyssey, it was another company. Uh, and then eventually, once they had both stations under their umbrella at, at Hudson Square, uh, it, I knew this was uh, a portend of things to come uh, and, and not, not good. And, and let's add that uh, WFAN is uh, also in that sure. same uh, little, little area. Um, let me ask you the same question I asked him. So what, what did you think when, when yeah. you heard it were, as somebody who's been all over the city, all over city news uh, and radio news, what'd you think? I was, I, I, I said this immediately on Facebook. First of all, I looked because I was surprised and I, I read the uh, link that people had posted uh, to just process it. I was just shocked. And yet, I wasn't surprised, if that makes sense. For the same reasons we've just been talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Um, this was something that was really on the horizon. They won't say it was on the horizon, but if you looked behind the scenes and, and really, uh, you know, at their, at their uh, balance sheet and just understood the mechanics of, of local radio at the, or even corporate, um, this was going to happen. And exactly what, uh, what Ralph said. Uh, there was no reason for them to carry both stations. Uh, 20 staff members were laid off um, from WCBS. Can we assume that people who, in their car, they want to get the traffic, or, you know, I know that's when I would mostly listen to those, um, those stations, that people have simply, who are interested, switched to um, WINS? Can we just assume that at least they're being served? I mean, I haven't examined the ratings or anything at this point. but I would say they are. I mean, I think at least on the short term, this is, you know, it, it's an easy fix for them that they, at least that's what they're thinking. They know they have a lot of the same people either have been, are connected with both stations. I mean, they were, they were kind of doing a smart move that they were combining uh, the talent before this happened. So in a way, it's almost a seamless venture for them that they had people switch right over uh, to WINS. Uh, you know, they were combining to have CBS and WINS people uh, so that when this happens, it's not like they ripped the Band-Aid all in one shot. That's a good point. That's a good, it's just such a corporate mentality that, number one, we're all subject to, and, of course, that controls these things. Uh, why did you think that it was relevant to talk about the New York Times uh, uh, backing off on endorsing candidates in this context? Uh, now, of course, the layoffs at WNYC, we can <coughs> talk about that as well. But why did you think that was a relevant, you know, uh, association to make? Uh, well, the two radio stations are local news. And the New York Times was serving a function of providing local news perspective on uh, the candidates running for office, uh, you know, and they essentially said, we're not doing that anymore, uh, except for the presidential elections. We'll, we'll weigh in on the presidential elections. So the Times is essentially saying they're less and less about New York. And, um, well, they've cut out the metro section. Look, you wrote, you wrote for the Daily News Bronx section for, for years. I mean, I, that's how we got to meet each other. Mm -hmm. um, so really, it is, 
it is taking away for us, for the local people, right? Exactly. No, it, it's, it's, it's just, a, a, it was a, it, it really a value that they provided their readers that only local news can provide. I mean, it, it, to, you, to, so that, that's gone. And you can, you, can, you can lump that together with the loss of news operations. You can uh, include layoffs in that because it's, it's just chipping away at the, at the lens New Yorkers had on, on local news and, and what's happening with politics, for I, I, I couldn't resist asking you this question. Now, city and state New York does not endorse candidates. No, we don't. Right. And, and just out of curiosity, what's the philosophy behind that? Because um, well, you don't see yourself as in the same way as, let's say, the Times. Um, we don't. We don't see ourselves. We're not a traditional news operation. We're more of a news analysis um, uh, That's uh, fair. outlet. Yeah. And yeah. so when news breaks, uh, we'd love to jump into the, into the swimming pool with everyone else, but we'll take a step back and provide the, the second-day analysis almost as, as quickly as we can. Um, so we, we and, and doing that with the number of profiles we do, um, we chose that not not to do not endorsements. To, not to do that. that. I think what you do then is provide the information so people who want to make endorsements at least have more information to deal with. I mean, to me, that's that's the way it looks. Um, what about this whole idea of the, uh, which Odyssey said it's all part of the headwinds facing local journalism? I'm going to ask you the same thing. Uh, you worked at the, the Daily News for many years. We were talking just before the show. We just mentioned it now. Uh, no longer a Bronx section, which I think hurts us tremendously. I've noticed that the paper, it's hard not to notice, it's large, I don't want to say largely, but many crime stories. It's like they fill it up, all the pages, with, listen, they're horrible things, and I guess they are news, but it's not useful news other than just... You know, somebody got stabbed last night. There was a horrible. I think the front page today has a, a picture of uh, uh, a, a, a young boy who was starved by his mother. I mean, just horrible stories. Um, is that is that where we're going? Is that, is that what all this leads to uh, ultimately? Are um, you concerned? And, and I'll ask you the same question. Well, I, I believe the, the the news is uh, serving a, a function that. Um, that other newspapers aren't at the moment. Yes, you were telling me that before the show. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, and 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 so, uh, you know, for, to to have the one news outlet that can provide you with uh, you know, daily news coverage that is uh, that doesn't adhere to an agenda. Let's say it's not an agenda-driven news uh, product. The Daily News, as much as maybe the New York Post. Um, so. The news has found its niche in providing local coverage of the community, and unfortunately, crime stands out very much so. But they're also uh, providing really uh, deep news coverage of politics. They do do that, and no they're question well about it. Well sourced with City Hall, and they also still have a decent editorial page. And they have a great editorial page. He yes. said, "I call it decent. He called it great. That's fair." He used to work there. What can I tell you, um, Jerry? What for you? What what about the headwinds facing local journalism? What do you think? Well, I mean, uh, I, uh, first reaction is when something like this happens back to CBS. Uh, this is uh, when when an Odyssey does something like this, and, and you know, and they're thinking about their pockets, their their bottom line. This is doing a disservice to the community. Uh, in this case, New York City. And especially, I would say, more, more so the suburbs, because 880 was more of a suburban station. Um, and really? It, yeah, I, I hadn't viewed it like that. Yeah, when, and I've spoken to people who I know who worked uh, the Long Island bureau chief for a number of years. Uh, they, CBS was what would be called the donut, where if you looked at the, um, the, uh, the range that this, this station took, it, mm. was, it fit... Connecticut, Long Island, you can, you can make a circle, and into northern New Jersey, uh, Westchester as well. Um, and that's not saying they didn't cover the city. They certainly did. But they were more of a coverage area as a supplement, if you will, to WINS by covering those areas. And the city station, WINS, was the donut hole right in the middle. Wow. I, I, I'd, I'd never viewed it like that. And you've heard from people in the suburbs, now you're at Long Island Patch, that, that this... Um 
uh, this is happening. You know, I've, I've explained, I'm going to ask both of you about this. I've explained this many times. The Bronx has 1.4, I mean, this is our concern here, 1.4 million residents, uh, enough to make it the eighth largest city in the nation. Um, we have News 12 and BronxNet. We have two weekly papers, one non-for-profit weekly paper, um, uh, pub and two papers published by a journalism school, and that's it. Boston, for example, which has 600,000, less than half the number of people in, in Boston, uh, in, in the Bronx, uh, Boston has network television, daily newspapers, plural. What, and I'm going to ask you both, what is the effect of um, the Bronx, for example, not having that per capita local coverage that cities like uh, half, our, half our size have? I, I mean, it, you, I think you can address this as well, certainly. Uh, I, I think, as you say, the population, it makes it like one of the larger cities, but it's under the umbrella of the but market. We, but we don't have the media. In right. other words, if they, we, we have a Columbus Day parade, and yes, so the Bronx Times will cover it, and maybe um, you know, Nord News might, might have a couple of pictures. If it's in, if it's in Boston, get a little picture on the front page of the paper. This is what happened in Boston. And we don't get that once a week, and certainly not the circulation that the Boston Globe would have. Go ahead. There's a term uh, used uh, that the Bronx essentially ha is, a, is not a complete news desert, but it, it's definitely not having the same coverage that, let's say, Manhattan is getting, for example, because sure. the, the, all the papers are based in the in Manhattan, and none of the papers really have. And, bureaus and what's anymore. the effect on the population? La lack of information about elected officials, lack of uh, analysis, which oh, you I'll, provide. I'll you know. editorialize a little. Please bit. do. I will, I'll say that Bronxites or the, the the average person on the street who might vote for Eric Adams is going to do it um, with very little knowledge of his indictment with very little knowledge of what of the drama at City Hall right now. Yeah. Or, or they'll have some uh, a superficial understanding exactly. of it and then not be able to really make the decision. Plus, of course, the, the, you know, we do the debates here, but nobody else does the political debates that we do. And I'll, and I'm, I'll also say that you know, City Hall can leverage that, that because uh, they have an ethnic uh, and community newspaper uh, uh, unit, right? Yeah. Division, right? Right. And that's brand new. It's 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 a one of a kind, and essentially it's an office that just puts out a lot of propaganda for the mayor, uh, his op eds. Right. You know, uh, and, you know, you say they can leverage it. Don't think they don't. They give all that to those small papers. One thing from you, and then I want to bring up something else that, to me, caused this whole movement. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh no, I just was going to say. The fact that local news, let's say the you know the local channels at eleven o'clock, when there's a story about the Bronx, uh, you know ninety five percent of the time it's going to be something very negative. Uh, we are all quite aware of that. <laughs> we live with it every every single day. Listen, when I started in radio um, and broadcasting, and which was radio, uh, radio, um, music radio, um, radio stations were required to carry news. This was part of their, licen their uh, licensing renewal thing. And it was, in fact, um, the Reagan FCC. And I, I was telling some of the people here on our crew, and they never heard anything like it, who abolished the Fairness Doctrine in 1987, which, um, and, and we've got, got some of the things of what the Fairness doc Doctrine did. It eliminated guidelines on how much informational program each station should carry replacing it with a generalized obligation to offer programming responsive to public issues. So they no longer had to do that. Estimated formal documentation of community needs, uh, we know they no longer had to do those kinds of things. So, that, so the station wasn't empowered or required to serve the community. Uh, abolished the FCC guidelines on maximum commercial time. Now they can run any number of commercials they want. And estimated program logs were replaced by an annual listing of five to ten issues as opposed to showing them that we've actually covered these things. I remember being on the radio and um, no, that's why we had all the Sunday morning news shows because the music stations had to run those things. To me, that's the bottom line here, mm -hmm. is that you could, you could then own 
like Odyssey, more than one station in the market. Deregulation. Deregulation. That was the uh, the, that the, was the, the flavor moment. of the eighties. Thank you, Ronald Reagan. And That's cool. um, uh, no, it made uh, it made radio much more of a business than it was uh, devoted as, at all as, to news. As, than it was a public service. Correct. Correct. Exactly. Um, uh, where, where do we go from here? What, what do people like you and me and, and we all think about um, what, um, what, what we want? Now, you wrote a book about, um, we, we should put up here now the news if we've got the picture of it, but um, you wrote a book about um, anchors, which was, to me, fascinating and, and called Here Now the News. Um, where, where do we go? We need people to write books and, and say, wait a minute, the, this is deregulation screwed us all? Or <laughs> what, what happens next? How, how do we get that local coverage? Business, it, businesses can't, can't afford to pay you know, all the advertising. It's a difficult problem. I would like to say it ebb and flows. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to flow back. Uh, I think that we're in a difficult time right now. I mean, as you said, the layoffs, the NYC layoffs, uh, which there were, I think there have been two rounds of it since 880, since CBS's, uh, uh, you know, shutdown, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know where this goes, but I know that there are a lot of signs that this is not over, that there is more problems uh, that we will see this continuing to some extent. Uh, as far as the local news and the product, I, you know, the, the community, as I said, suffers because we're not going to see the wider scale stories uh, and you're going to see a monopoly of it if Wins is doing something and that's it. Do, do you have a sense from, especially from doing the book that you, that you wrote, that uh, the big TV news operations are kind of losing their way, they, they take a lot of stuff from the network and they're covering national news and then they forget about us here in the Bronx and, and Queens and, and you know. All, all the other, Brooklyn and all the other neighborhoods I, in the city? I, you know, I, I think it, it was always with newspapers, it was always <coughs> if, it, uh, if it bleeds, it leads. It was always that sensationalism. Uh, and I think they're more interested in that and getting a rating with that uh, than they are about journalism, which is very hard to say that. It's very sad to say that. New, news stories, when, when I, was, I was producing at, at Network News, uh, news stories were maybe three minutes. Sometimes you could even get a feature of five minutes. Now, boy, if you got more than 90 seconds, you did a very lucky news right. story. That's another thing. I think people's attention spans, it's, it's much more condensed. Yeah. Um, Ralph, um, how big a challenge is it to keep your publication going? Now, you have among the most talented um, uh, journalists writing for you. I mean, I, I read stuff and I'm like, fascinated and, and, Thank you. and, and really on and your top 100 lists and all those lists really are good because they bring community. I, I mean, I know, I know what the, the marketing strategy is, but how difficult is it right now? Or, or now you have a large company that, that uh, we're, runs we're, it. Uh, we're owned by a, a larger company called uh, GovExec. And right. uh, um, I, I'd like to say that city and state uh, is, uh, is, is actually in a, in, in a very special position. It's a, because of, we, we, we are, we're kind of a niche product because we're writing only about politics, and we're writing about politics for a certain audience, and uh, in general, those are the people in politics. So the mayor's reading us, the governor's reading us, everybody who works for them is reading us. The people who do host talk shows read it, for example. <laughs> Journalists, politicians. <laughs> Political talk shows. Lobbyists. Um, so we have an audience that's reading us, and so that helps sell advertising. So we get that messaging uh, to the politicians. So we've got a, a model that, that's, that's very successful, that makes money. And um, niche journalism at the moment is filling the void of local journalism uh, that, of, that, that's been left by the disappearance of local journalism. Um, and nonprofit journalism as well. I, I'm, I'm going to add City Limits, Gotham is Correct. the city. Uh, I, I, I have many friends, and I hope I have, don't forget anybody, but these provide some of the local coverage that we don't get because we don't have daily newspapers. Well, and when I say niche, some of these news outlets are focusing on one specific area, like street block, you know, like transportation, things like that. Right, that's true. And they report the local news from that lens. Um, bring everybody together, and that's the local news coverage that New Yorkers have right now. It's not coming from the New York Times. 
only when they parachute in. It's not coming from, you know. It, only it, when they parachute in on what, what Jerry said, largely a negative story or something like that, or if there's a big investigative story. Yeah. And I don't want to, and I respect their work. I mean, of course. we need the New York Times. I'm not saying that, uh, I don't want to be overly critical of them, you know, because we could also see them uh, suffer the same kind of uh, financial hardships. And right. um, I think the important thing to remember is that um, everything changes, right? Nothing lasts forever. And, and so we're in a transition period. Technology has really revolutionized everything right. and changed everything. We can't afford to really be nostalgic. We, we have to live. Wow. What we, a great solution. I, you know, <laughs> he, he's going to punch me in the nose because I didn't say patch as well. Um, talk about um, Patch and, and, and what it provides for uh, the communities, communities like the Bronx and, and you're on Long Island, so right. you know, those kinds of things. And, and, and for markets and cities and towns across the country. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, journalism for local, local news, in effect, for across the country, where you can get, whether it's bulletin board stories, stories about uh, new businesses, politics, crime, uh, and and I don't want to say that's the wave of the future because they've been around for 15 years. Right. But it's it's an outlet that people can certainly uh, use. The same question that I asked Ralph: for, is, is it tough to keep it going? Is, is like every week? Do you say, goodness, if we don't sell X number? I mean, obviously everybody wants to sell advertising and all that. But but is, is it a tough uh, ride right now? Uh, yeah, it's oh, been it a is. tough ride. <laughs> and, uh, I thought you were going to say no. no it, we're, it's we're totally fine. a tough. Ride. I mean, it's about. You know, it's about page and views and how and what stories are generating page views. You, you know, I which had, is their version of ratings. I'm I sorry. had a, a kind of a news website for the Bronx for a couple of years called This Is the Bronx Info. We the pandemic ended it because small businesses that we were using to fund it, you know, to buy advertising, couldn't do it. Pandemic affect your work. It didn't actually, I got hired during the pandemic. Ah, because they needed somebody. They needed, and, and I think that it took time before they realized that, wait a minute, we have to make some, not cuts, but there were layoffs, like a, a maybe a year or so later. Uh, but initially, during the pandemic, I was hired, somebody else was hired, so uh, there, there was a need. Uh, city and State New York, folks, get to cityandstatenewyork.com, there it is. And uh, Patch, uh, we could read them on Long Island. You could read them uh, just about anywhere. So uh, Ralph Ortega from City and State New York, thank you so much. And uh, Jerry Barmash, congratulations on the book. We will uh, thank everybody in sight. Thanks to our producer, Stephen Powell. Our director is Will Guzman. Eurelis and Car Carnacion is our graphics person. Editor is Yessi Diaz. We have a cast of thousands working with us here in the studio. And of course, to you too, the people of the Bronx. Now next week, we'll talk more about media specifically, and these guys will love this, truth in media, especially leading up to the election. How do you determine fiction from fact during these politically fractured times? So, if the curtain don't fall and the creek don't rise, yeah, we'll be here next week. Good night. <laughs>